Hello again, this is Dave Yance with the Heating Refrigeration Program. Today we're going to go through the steps that a service company would go through this time of year when they come out to your house to do a winter tune-up. And we're going to do it on this Linux. Uh, this is the induced draft. And uh, normally a tech would be carrying a tool bag about like this with uh, sorted hand tools in there that they can do everything they need to do. As a matter of fact, uh, I will probably only use two or three of these tools to do this entire job today. So we'll set this bag off to the side. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the door off and you lift up and pull out at the bottom and the door comes off. And uh, on the inside of the door sometimes are a wiring schematic should you ever need it. Now we're going to take the bottom door off. Uh, again, we're going to lift up and pull out and the door comes off. An important thing to note here is on the front of this door, this label is called a diagnostic chart. Sometimes it's on the inside of the door. Here is the wiring diagram I told you about just a second ago. But if we come back to here, this diagnostic chart will tell you there's a light on the circuit board. These two lights here that are flashing now, if there's a problem with the furnace, they will flash a code. And if you look at the code here, it'll tell you approximately what the problem is. So this really helps the tech uh, troubleshoot quickly. Uh, the door here is so that the tech can look in through the door and see the lights and know what the code is before he takes the door off. So we'll take the door off and put it over here. First thing I'm going to do is unhook the 120 volts electricity going to the furnace because once I get into this compartment, there would be a lot of live electrical connections and we want to make it safe to work in here. The two tools I'm going to use to perform this are called nut drivers. There's two of them. One is a red-handled nut driver and it is a quarter inch screw. The yellow handle is a 5 16 and it fits a 5 16 screw. On all furnaces and air conditioners, all the screws are either quarter inch or five sixteenths. So these two tools alone will do just about everything. So the first thing I want to do is I want to take this board out of the way because I want to pull this motor out. And up under here are two screws that hold this bracket in place. So I'm going to take the quarter inch nut driver and unloosen that screw. We don't need to take it all the way out. And on this side, we will unloosen the screw over here. And now, by sliding this plate forward, it will unhinge off of those screws. The holes are larger here and smaller here, so when the screw goes in, we slide it up and then tighten the screw that holds this in. This is a circuit board and transformer, so we're just going to move all of this over here to the side of the furnace, lay it down. This is the squirrel cage and blower motor. There are two screws that hold this in, and in this case, we're going to take our 5 16 nut driver, they are located right up here at the bottom, so we'll reach in here, unscrew. The first screw, and I'll lay it up here on the shelf so I don't lose it. And then there's a screw on the other side. Reach up here and unscrew it. And I will place it up here. Now I'm ready to pull that whole assembly out. So I grab it and I just slide it back. It'll drop down, watch your wires, keep your wires out of the way. You slide the 
the housing back and you just very gently pull and the entire squirrel cage housing comes out of the furnace. This is the, we call it a squirrel cage because it goes around and around and there's a motor there and this is what moves air up through the furnace and into your house when you're heating and in the summertime this same motor will be pushing air up through to move the cool air for air conditioning. So this motor pulls double duty. What we want to do is we want to check these veins and make sure they're clean. If they're not clean, then we would take this assembly apart, take it out and wash it. This one is clean by looking at it. We turn it around to this side where you can see the motor. And what we normally are doing here, we're looking, we want to clean these slots here. This is how the air gets in to cool the motor. And because it's in the return air, it will get dirty. So we want to wipe this off, make sure the dirt's out of here so that the air can get in and cool the motor. We also want to look at the end cap here to see if there is a port to where we can oil the bearing in the motor. This one does not have the ports, so that tells us this is a sealed bearing and it's permanently lubricated and we don't need to do anything to it. So we can turn it back around. We're clean. Uh, we can put it back in. When we put it in, these two rails slide up in there on two guides. This flange catches in the back and that's what holds this whole assembly in there. And then the two screws we took out go through these holes right here and screw up into the housing. So once again, I will put this back in the furnace. And watch my wires. When I get it in there, I can look in here and see the guides and I tip the front of the motor up and just push up and in, again, watching your wiring, like that. The motor has slid in and those three flanges have all caught. We take our 5 16 screw, and most of this is done by just touch and feel. Uh, it's kind of hard to get in there and see anything, but you can reach up in there and feel the hole. Start to screw by hand. And then once you get the screw started, you put your 5 16 nut driver on there. And you tighten the screw up. We uh, grab the second screw, reach up in here, find the hole, start the screw. And when you're putting a screw in, if you turn it to the right, that tightens it. So we uh, put our wrench on it now and tighten it. And we have a saying in the trade, righty tidy, lefty loosey. Okay, motors mounted. Now we put our circuit board back in. So we kind of bring it around and work the wires to where they lay freely. We're going to, the screws are still in there, we're going to line them up with the holes. That one's in, that one's in, oops. Now I'm gonna take my 5 16 nut driver and tighten those two screws.
Okay, now we got that done, we just kind of push our wires back in here. This circuit board controls the entire operation of the furnace and air conditioner. We're going to leave the door off for now. We're going to move up to the upper part of the furnace, and this is a inducer motor, and there's a hose here that runs from the motor to a pressure switch. We want to take that hose off, and it will become plugged up with water and condensation, rust, dirt, things like that. So we just simply blow through the hose to make sure it's clean. If it's not, then we take a piece of wire, run it through there to clean it. Then we put the hose back on the pressure switch and back on the inducer motor, like that. This furnace is fairly new. The burners are clean. All the wiring looks good. We always want to check for wiring that might have been pinched or cut. Loose ends. Come down here again to the bottom. We just check to make sure all the wiring connections are secure. And again, we unplug the electricity so it's safe to touch all this. Okay, now that we have checked all that, we have basically done all the important things to check, which is what we call preventative maintenance, to ensure that the furnace should work throughout the winter without any problems. So the next thing we want to do is test it and make sure it is working.